Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today, I want to talk about recording sound, bird sounds. Why they're useful, how to do it, where to put your recordings. So yeah, let's talk about bird recording. So, nature produces a lot of sounds. Birds, especially, are famous for having amazing sounds. Some of them are beautiful, some of them are just kind of crazy. Lots and lots of different types of sounds that are out there. And you can learn a lot about a bird by listening to its sound. I mean, you can certainly identify birds by their sounds. Oftentimes, you don't have to see the bird at all, but if you know what you're listening for, and you hear it in a bush, you know what kind of bird there is. You can also learn things about bird behavior. I mean, bird song, bird vocalization is an aspect of bird behavior. And as an aspect, it can tell you other things about its behavior. You can tell if a bird is nesting. You can tell if a bird is and maybe in a, a territorial fight uh, for a territory. You can tell if a pair of birds are sort of bonded together and are working together, foraging together, kind of keeping track of each other. You can tell a lot about what's going on with the bird by listening to its sound. And that makes them really useful to accumulate and collect. And also really fun. It gives you this really, op really amazing opportunity to learn more about birds gives you a whole extra window beyond the visual as a way of gaining knowledge and appreciation of the birds around us. So paying attention to bird songs has a lot of value. It's got a lot of value personally. You know, you can learn more about birds. It's got a lot of value sort of professionally because there are tons of researchers out there who study bird songs. But studying bird songs is kind of tricky in some ways because for one thing sounds you know they they are produced they exist very briefly and then as soon as the bird stops producing them they're gone so they're hard to sort of keep track of how do you go back and reference a call or a song that you might have heard a bird make well you need to record it somehow Collecting recordings and collecting data is a really important thing for researchers to do, and it's something that everybody can help with. And that's one of the big things I'd like to talk about today, is how to, with, with a fairly minor amount of equipment, how can you go out and collect bird songs and contribute to this amazing data set that is accessible to everybody, uh, and can be used and further people's knowledge about birds in the natural world that we live in. So, in terms of equipment, one of the pieces of equipment that probably most of us have and that is great for recording bird songs is a cell phone. Have you got a smartphone? This thing has a microphone in it that is capable of recording pretty good sounds, especially when it comes to bird songs. Most of the time, given most circumstances, this is all you need. Now, there are a few things to know about using your cell phone when you're trying to capture the sounds of birds, or really any natural sound. One is, you're probably going to want an app. I know, there's an app for that, right? There's an app for everything. And it's true with, with recordings of sounds. There are lots of free, high-quality, sound-capturing apps available. Do you, have, you do have to pay attention to what kind of phone you have. Some apps work really great with iPhones. Some apps work really great with Android phones. And so you do have to know what kind of phone you have, and so you've picked the appropriate app. Um, but once you've got that, there are several that have the capabilities 
of collecting really, really great recordings if you set them up right. And that's where you need to do some tailoring. So I'm gonna give you some numbers and some sort of criteria for how to set up your phone's recording app to get the best, sort of most useful sound recordings that you could then contribute and add to other sources. You could easily put them on your own website. You could add them to other people's websites. You can add them to big data sets, that kind of thing. So, one thing you want to be really careful of is what kind of file type your phone saves a recording as. The most widely used and sort of easily transferable file type is a WAV file, an uncompressed .wav, that's .wav file. So some phone apps will have that as the default, some of them won't, so you wanna check it. Another thing you wanna check on is the, the quality of the recording. Many phones have the options for intentionally capturing audio recordings at higher quality or lower quality, depending on what you need, depending on how much storage you have in your phone, that kind of thing. Recordings that are gonna be useful for bird identification and bird, certainly bird science. You want high quality. So oftentimes an option will be just high or low that a phone app will have. Those are your options, high or low, so go with high. But many of them have a lot more detail than that. Many of them have a sampling rates measured in kilohertz of a whole different slew of numbers. So what you're looking for is 48 kilohertz and to make sure your phone is recording at that sampling rate. Another thing you wanna focus on is the channels. So basically, there are ways of recording things and oftentimes these apps are set up to have a variety of different ways of recording. Basically, how many different microphones they could possibly incorporate. So if you have a couple of different microphones, you can record things in stereo. It gives you a lot more sort of perspective and depth of sound. But honestly, most phones, they've got one microphone, and so mono is what they're gonna be set up to do best, and that's really what you wanna keep the setting on. Unless you have some really fancy setup, keep your phone on just mono recording. You want to make sure that the levels are about right. So this sort of is where the sensitivity in decibels is. And you want to keep yours between the sort of 6 to 12 decibel range. And if you can find an app and sort of pay attention to it and set it up so that it follows all those numbers, you'll be in great shape to get really great audio recordings for the natural world around you. Now, once you get your phone all set up and you're ready to head out into the field, there are some more things to kind of think about. One is, another thing about your phone, the physical aspect about your phone, is you gotta know where your microphone is. Now, I happen to know that my microphone, usually I you know, hold it up to my face, and the microphone is down here at the bottom where my mouth would be to easily capture my, my voice. And so, since that's where the microphone is, when you're recording a bird, you wanna make sure that the microphone is pointed at the bird. Right? Makes common sense. Another thing is proximity. You know, to get the highest quality sound, you want to get as close as you can to the bird without disturbing it. And so, you know, you, you want to focus on proximity. And this is where kind of experimenting with recording becomes a really great idea. Go out a few times and record things at different distances. You know, get really close to something and then back up a few feet and then back up a few more feet and then go, you know, 100 feet back and see how the recording sounds, and you can kind of get a sense of your phone and your app, how, what's reasonable, what actually works, what actually yields a good recording that you can actually hear. Another thing you want to pay attention to to get a really good recording is background noise. Background noise is annoying when you're making recordings. It clouds and masks the, the sound that you're really going after, that you're targeting. And so you want to try to set up situations where the sound that you want to record is loud and the little background noise is quiet. This is something called the signal to noise ratio. You want to keep it high signal, low noise. 
Some other things to think about when you're out are weather. You know, if it's gonna be really, really windy, for example, that might be a real problem for your microphone because microphones pick up wind sound quite readily. Oftentimes on really high-end commercial microphones, you'll see these really gigantic fuzzy things on the top of the microphone. And that's a baffle. It's, a, it's something to specifically design and add it to the microphone to cut down on things like wind noise. It quiets the wind down. And you can get those kinds of things for your cell phone. Uh, you know, it's, it's one more thing you can get. But if you don't have one, then you want to pay really attention, really close attention to the background noise, including that wind. So you want to take weather into account. And then, finally, something you want to pay attention to, as with almost everything, is safety. It's, it's very easy when you get focused on recording a bird sound. And this happens when you're looking at a bird, too. To get very focused on the bird and to kind of lose track of your surroundings a little bit. And what you don't want to end up doing is being so focused on a bird sound that you walk into a dangerous situation. I mean, don't walk into a road, sort of have some sort of situational awareness around you, right? So that you are safe. You want to be safe when you're collecting bird sounds. You also want the bird to be safe. So if you're, if you're following a bird and it's moving along and you're pushing it into a dangerous situation, you don't want to do that. You want to stop before you endanger yourself and before you endanger the bird. So now once you've had have this accumulation of recordings, you've gone out, you've got your favorite app, and you've got it all set up so that it captures really high quality video, and you've spent a fair bit of time learning your system and making sure that you've got really great recordings, and you've got lots of them, lots of different species, lots of different species doing different things, what do you do with them? Well, there are a couple of websites, publicly accessible websites, that are serving as these great collecting points of visual recordings. So you could upload photos, videos, just sightings, uh, observations, and audio recordings. And then they're growing into these gigantic databases, some of them worldwide databases, which is really awesome. I'm going to leave links in the description below. But three of the big ones are iNaturalist, Zeno Canto, and eBird. So I would encourage you to make your recordings and whenever you can, share them with the world. Add them to this database. And that way, researchers who are out there can go through and pull this amazing resource, amazing data set that's been contributed by so many different people adding their recordings together on these sites. And they can help and those those data sets can help all sorts of people learn all sorts of amazing things about the birds around the world. So grab your cell phone, set it up, go find some birds, record them like crazy, and add those recordings to these data sets. And we can all help to contribute to furthering our enjoyment, our knowledge, and our understanding of birds through the sounds that they make. Thank you very much for the view. I hope you go out and record a ton of amazing sounds. And until next time, enjoy the natural world. Mm -hmm.